everyone! So we are here today to share some of our most disappointing reads of 2018. There's gotta be a few. There's gotta be some duds to get some stars, right? <laughs> exactly! <laughs> um, now, I don't know about you guys, but it was actually a little bit of a struggle to find five books that I was like... It was definitely a yeah. struggle for me to, to get yeah. up there. So these aren't necessarily like terrible books, but they were lackluster, shall yes. we say. Yes. <laughs> so well, we weren't expecting yeah, them to exactly. be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Crystal, why don't you start with your first read and we will go down the line. So I'm going to go in order of the ones I was like, ugh, most, to the ones that weren't so bad. And so my first one is 99 Days by Katie Katugno. I listened to the audiobook earlier in the year and I love contemporary romance like mm -hmm. we all yeah, know you're that. Huge <laughs> and I was just like you people are terrible you're so <laughs> they're such big cheaters and there was yeah. everybody was so like deceptive and it's like why are you just have a conversation and get it over with <laughs> like <laughs> stop doing everything that you're doing so as fun as it was to like it was a great setting it was mm -hmm. like at a, a resort type thing in the summer in a small town that she's gone back to but it was just like guys don't cheat just get together and leave everybody else out of it. It was a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, that book is like completely like the whole narrative is about cheating. Huh. Mm. Multiple times. Mm. And is there like any re not redemptive really, qualities not at really. any point? No. <laughs> no. I, or if there was, I didn't really notice because I actually just stopped caring about them. I was like, I, I'm so disappointed in both of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get it together. Yeah. Get it together. <laughs> What about you, Sally? My first one is The Seismic Seven by Kate Flavinsky, which is a middle grade book that came out earlier this year. Um, and I have a huge problem with like grown ups writing like cool kids speak. <laughs> right. And I think that's what, uh, that was one of my biggest problems with this book. Um, but basically, the plot is that uh, our main character, who. Um, is, I can't remember if she's like a YouTube star or if she yeah. just like sort of travels everywhere with, with her video camera, but um, she has won like a coveted spot in this summer program where she gets to um, participate in like a geological study. Oh cool. So I really like the setup. I was like, I think I'm gonna like this. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be full of science and stuff. Um, but then it's like they have to stop, um, stop a super volcano and then there's like a plot twist where the... How much can I spoil it here? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very adventurous. It's Sounds... very adventurous, but it was just like, it was too <laughs> sassy for my liking. <laughs> and also the the plot twists and, and uh, you know, the... It just, it, it didn't come together for <laughs> right. me. It was so unbelievable and it was like, I can really suspend my... my Believe. disbelief for a lot of stuff but uh <laughs> the yeah I, I didn't believe the science I didn't believe the story I didn't like the characters <laughs> it was not my favorite of the year <laughs> oh dear <laughs> so I have one of those weird books that isn't middle grade but it's really not YA either like okay. the characters are in the first year of high school okay so okay. it's hmm. kind of like toes the line yeah <laughs> and I've never read a book, a contemporary book that's set in that setting that I've liked. Okay. In like that age range, because I feel like it's very hard to nail on the head because you're not a kid, but you're not a like, yeah. You're not, like a that's grown up. super tricky. Mm -hmm. So it is tricky. I'm curious. High school for them is what age? Because for me that was 13, but for some people that's like 15. I think it's 13. Year. Okay. I think it's 13. Um, they're quite young. Okay. But this is about a girl named Julie, um, and she's kind of like exploring her sexuality, like, f figuring out what's happening. She's been in love with her best friend for, like, years since they were, like, kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then one day she comes home from school and her mother tells her her heart has stopped beating. Her mother's heart? Yeah. Okay. So, and she's like, clearly alive and, like, clearly <laughs> has a heartbeat, but her mother is just convinced she is dead. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so... She's it's, and it's like she's she's trying to like take care of her mother, and like to the point her mother thinks she's dead to the point where she has like fantasies of being buried in a graveyard and they like drive to the graveyard at night and she's like you just just bury me just like and like they like role play her oh, being buried dear. in a grave and like yeah <laughs> and like 
I just, it sounds interesting, but it just never came together for Right. Me. And, like, they experiment with, like, drinking and stuff, and, like, there's this, like, maybe there's a boy she maybe has a crush on, and, like, it just had this weird, like, mother having some kind of psychological meltdown. Right. Um, and then her also trying to come to terms with high school. Right. And it's, like, it just never, it just never got it right for me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was, like, and it was just so... And, I, and it was like, where are the rest of the adults in your life? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she has, like, she has a dad who's, like, kind of pulled away. But, like, there's... Where are the adults? Where right. are they? <laughs> like, so... Like, it's like, this is clearly... This is cr insane. Yeah, you think they <laughs> tell someone. Yeah. Like, uh, I think my mom's gone crazy. I think her, her mom makes a promise not to tell her something uh, like that. But... Okay. I mean... Sure. Plot device. Sure. <laughs> Anyways. So it was... Yeah. I think it took me, like... It's not very long. It took me like two months to finally like push through. Wow. That's like my version Shocking. of a DNF. That's totally. Like, <laughs> I pick up and like read a chapter every like three days. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm impressed that you actually I did it. persevere with stuff like that it. because yeah, a, a big part of the reason that I struggled to come up with five is because I just, I don't Dude, finish yeah, books I don't fair. like. That's fair. Um, and so. I probably should have done that. <laughs> With this one. <laughs> but moving on. Moving yeah. on. Crystal, your next one. So, number two for me um, is called Foxy, My Life in Three Acts, which was a memoir by Pam Greer, who is a famous actress. Like, I think she started in the 50s. She did a lot of Roger Corman movies. Mm -hmm. She's known as um, Foxy Brown, Black Coffee, and she was in Jackie Brown with Tarantino. She was like the queen of black exploitation, kind of. Yeah, right? and like I, I, I wanted after reading a Roger Corman biography, I wanted to learn more about how African American actresses broke in to the film industry mm -hmm. and how she was so popular and like what her life was like. And so her book started with her as a child and as she broke into the business and lived in L.A. and the boyfriend that she had, and then she ended up she ended up having cancer and dealing with that. But I found the book. There were certain parts of it that were super interesting, but I felt a lot of it, I felt like I was being talked down to a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel you're over explaining things and you're kind of making me feel like an idiot, <laughs> even huh. though I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> right. But it's just, I think maybe I just didn't like her voice and maybe I would have enjoyed her story if it was a biography and not an autobiography. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say, but there were a few like, there were definitely a few scenes in it that I found that were really powerful and really eye-opening for, like, you know, race in America mm -hmm. at that time. And I was like, wow, that was a big step forward. And I could see why she went home crying with happiness that she was able to do something that, mm -hmm. like, her parents would have never been able to do. Right. And so that was great. But there were parts I found, found that were over-explained. And I was like, dude, <laughs> I get it. Right. <laughs> but And not, like, anything to do with race and stuff that I felt was over explained right. because I wouldn't get it because right. but perhaps I'm like me. An but just editor, general things writer. about yeah. how she owned horses and just over explaining technical things that You're a bit you pretentious kind of know. Kinda? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I was a little bit disappointed, but it was still a really interesting read. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Sally? My next one is The Ice Garden by Gary Jones. And this is another one that was like very cool concept. Mm -hmm just never came together. Right. Um, so this is about, um, I believe she's a 12 year old girl who's allergic to sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, and so has, you know, obviously lived a very sheltered life and it's just her and her mom. Um, and, you know, has spent so much time in hospitals and is just like so frustrated with, with her life and the fact that mm -hmm. she kind of like doesn't have very much agency over her own life. And, you know, the doctors don't really talk to her, they talk to her mom and so you, she, right. That part was really well built up of like, just this sort of like, she's at this age and this time in her life, it's like a, a breaking point where right. she's like, I need my own thing. Um, and then she sneaks out at night, or maybe the first time she finds this place is not in the middle of the night. But anyways, she, she finds this fantasy land basically mm -hmm. called the Ice Garden that's like through a, tunnel or like a little right. door or something in a playground and it's this other world and uh she doesn't have to be covered and there's you know there's no sun in this right. ice world but uh so the 
the idea of it was so cool and then sort of like just as they had set it up I was like I'm already too far into this book for this to right. complete <laughs> in any kind of <laughs> way that I wanted to <laughs> um yeah and it just kind of it 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 really just crumbled from there. And also, as far as like, what you were just saying, like, where are the parents? <laughs> she has this like incredibly responsible, or so it is set up in the beginning, single mom who like cares about nothing more than her. And yet she's able to sneak out at night like over <laughs> and over again and go to this world for like hours. And they even specifically say that like time passes right. regularly while she's there. So I'm like, as if. As if the mom would never wake up. I think it, you know, yeah. it happens once towards the end where she does sort of get caught out, but it really just kind of like felt fumbled together yeah. at the end and I was I was disappointed by it. That's fine. Sounds yeah. cool. Yeah. It sounds cool. <laughs> Um, my next one is one, I just even don't know how I'm going to explain it. <laughs> I've got, I think I talked about this yeah. <laughs> earlier this year at some point in the video, but this is I Crawl Through It by A.S. King. A.S. King is an author that I very much enjoy, okay. except for this book. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is very much surrealist fiction. Okay. So I don't know what the difference between surrealist and magical realism is. Hmm. I think it's like a bit more bizarre maybe I okay. don't I've never really distinguished the two but this one is <sighs> okay <laughs> I'm really gonna struggle because there isn't really a plot but there's all sorts of like strange basically people keep calling in bomb threats to this school and there's five different four different kids um, who all have different traumas in their life and they're dealing with it in what I think is supposed to be a metaphor but I don't really know like Gustav is building a helicopter. He believes his helicopter is invisible, and because he believes it, it makes it so. Stanzi is wearing a lab coat, a coat that she never takes off. She believes her lab coat hides her secret, and because she believes it, it makes it so. China is inside out. She has swallowed herself. She believes this protects her, and because she believes it, it makes it so. Lansdale tells lies, lies that can make her hair grow. She believes lies can change her, and because she believes it, it makes it so. And it writes it in a way where these things are actually happening. Right. So it, this girl is actually swallowing herself and she's inside out and like this helicopter is invisible but you can fly in it and like, uh -huh. <laughs> like it's, and like it's very it's just so strange <laughs> and there's like a, a homeless man hiding in a bush that you can buy like physical let like he sells you letters but like like the letter a right huh. and i'm like and I just didn't get it. <laughs> like, I just didn't get it. And I'm sure this book is for some people. But huh. I just, it just went right over my head. <laughs> like, I was just, like, the whole time. It was another one I was like, like, this is so, and like, it's written in very weird formats. And it's, huh. it wasn't my thing. But I got this copy on Book Outlet. And it's signed, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> Maybe you could sell it to somebody yeah. who would get it. <laughs> I don't know. So I really like A.S. King. I've read five other of her novels. Yeah. But this one... It is this totally like a departure? Yeah, they're her? all standalones. Okay. And her, like, her books are all a little bit weird. Okay. But they're not incomprehensible. <laughs> <laughs> incomprehensible. <laughs> and like, again, there are five star reviews of this book. So huh. it's maybe just a me thing, but... Right. I didn't get it. Okay. Fair so. enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yes, well. Mine's not as weird. Yeah. <laughs> but, and this is where I'm getting into slight disappointments versus not liking. Mm -hmm. And I recently listened to the audiobook for Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Abertali, who I adore. Mm -hmm. But I just, Leah just fell flat for me. I... I mean, I wasn't expecting too, too much, but I loved revisiting the school and the characters that I know, but I just feel like the characters that I love so much were just taken in a slightly different direction yeah. than mm -hmm. I would have wanted them to go in, but I really did enjoy being back in the world, but it just left me a little hollow and yeah. not, yeah, not what I expected it to be, but I didn't hate it and I was just a little like, oh, mm -hmm. it was good. Yeah. yeah. No, no spoilers, but did you like who she ended up with? No. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's going to make me sound like a bad person, but I just... I didn't see it coming, but... but that I liked <laughs> who I thought she would, would be good with in the first book, 
And right. I was hoping that would happen in this book, but it didn't. Hmm. But. Womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't mind the direction that Leah took. I, it's a few of the other characters and who she ended up with. I was like, that, whoa, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. But I guess you never know. So. Yeah. But yeah. Well, it's still good, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially because you like. Oh, because loved. I adore Simon, yeah. and like I loved the upside of Unrequited and how those characters kind of made little cameos mm -hmm. and stuff. Like I love Becky's whole world, but I just uh, I don't know when you have something you love so much mm -hmm. like Simon, you put those characters where you think they'll go in the future. Yeah, so course. a follow up isn't always something that you're expecting. Yeah, yeah, and all be winners. Um, <clears throat> this is another one that I actually did quite like I just wanted way more from it. It was like um it was yeah I feel like it could have been like triple the length that it was right. and that is Dreaming Dangerous by Lauren DiStefano. Mm -hmm. Um so this is about um a like elite and secret um boarding school where all of the students um have special powers and the the group that we follow throughout it they uh they dream together oh, and uh the school like <coughs> has them like train together in their dreams so they're they're clearly like training them to be prepared for something that's coming in the future <laughs> um and they are they are all orphans like they they um and you never know like quite how they got there in the first place like how did they find these kids to bring right. the school but um you you start to learn that like perhaps the school itself is not as trustworthy as as they've been raised to believe it is um and uh i was like i loved the setup to it and then it was done and i wanted way more from it i wanted to know more about the school right. i wanted to know more about the kids i wanted to know what happened next but i don't think it's going to be a series no. oh um huh. so it just was done <laughs> I was like, but i need more yeah that's too bad yeah it, it sounds does. like something i'd really like but yeah. there's not going to be more <laughs> exactly and i could be wrong on that i should look into that more but it um it didn't feel like it a didn't feel first like there it, it ended on a cliffhanger and there would be I don't know. I, I, hmm. I do I should look into that actually to make sure that I'm I'm not wrong on this. But uh yeah, like it had a total like X Men vibe to it in some hmm. ways, which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so it's it not well rounded in story. Yeah. It was like you needed to keep add a couple more more pages and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because it was a fairly short book as well. I was like, I mean, it wasn't a novella, but it wasn't much longer than right. you would get with that. So I was like, yeah. Don't be afraid to long, more, more, write more. long books <laughs> to authors. We will read them yes, to finish exactly. your story. <laughs> That's too bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my next one is when I just read <laughs> for Tis the Seasonathon. And I had low expectations initially. Yeah. Because it does say that they were making it into a Hallmark movie. Oh, which I've seen ads for. It looks bad. Um, and that is Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe by Melissa De La Cruz. I like this cover. Mm -hmm. It's a cute cover. Um, and this is a modern day retelling of Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Gender swapped. And I liked that the character, Darcy, is a, she was like a strong, she's a hedge fund manager, she's 29, like she's like a self-made woman which we'll get into <laughs> about you know so like that premise at first i was like okay this is you know big girl, How bad could this be? girl in the big city and so i got you know like when i was like 50 pages in i was like it's not great but it's entertaining uh -huh. and then you get a bit more into the meat of the story and it's real bad <laughs> i think like first off i think and i said this in my vlog for tis the season thon is if it was just like a bad story, I would have given this two stars. But okay. the writing is horrendous. Oh, no. <laughs> it was so bad. Like I don't know how this got published. <laughs> and that's why it's gonna be a Hallmark movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it gave it one star. Nice. But that's mean. I love it. <laughs> the way they talk about privilege in this book. Like, I am a white, straight female. I'm a fairly privileged person. 
But the way they talk about how she's like this self-made woman. First up, she grew up in this like super rich family with like a mansion and her all of her and her siblings all went to different <laughs> Ivy League schools. Uh -huh. So, but then <laughs> when she became an adult, her parents cut her off because she didn't want to marry this other wealthy guy. Oh. So she made her career all on her own. She is self-made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it wasn't. <laughs> Like that. It's not what self means. <laughs> Your parents put you through Duke. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, little tone deaf yeah. there. <laughs> like, oh, I'm banging my head. Um, yeah. So I was just like infuriated at her. She's like, I'm an independent woman. It's like, girl. <laughs> and of course, everything comes together at the end, and everybody's happy. And yeah. They've been they saving cut her, her back into the will. They've been saving her Christmas <laughs> presents for her for the past seven years. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> it's like, god damn it. <laughs> so anyways. Now I gotta read this. I'm not gonna lie. You gonna read it or you gonna watch it? I got it for Christmas last year yeah. and I, I've been saving it for this year because I kind of got it after it's really Christmas. It's really fast but read. <laughs> it sounds entertaining. I wanna see that. <laughs> it's just like... Made me so shake my head. Something that times she gets drunk nothing. like every day. Really? Oh, no, she's Bridget Jones. <laughs> and like so that she, she worked on finishing her drink. It's so right. So much eggnog. <laughs> just... Sometimes there's nothing more fun than reading a book that you know is bad just so you can talk about how bad. It is. Yeah, like so. I'm having when I'm done, more. we'll chat again. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> it's just like I'm a self-made woman, bitch. Uh. <laughs> a new detective author that I read for the Canadian Readathon. Oh, oh, Readathon. Readathon, that was it. <laughs> and that is Still Life by Louise Penny. And I it, I enjoyed there I always want to like branch out and find a new detective author and a new series to like get obsessed with because there's only like four that I'm obsessed mm -hmm. with. I really should branch out. <laughs> so, I tried her first book and the the crime and the investigation itself was okay, but I feel I got to learn way more about the people involved in the small town than I did about the detective and his team themselves. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting to know the wrong person. Right. <laughs> like, and people talk about how great he is, and the series was recommended to me as well. And I hear it gets, I've heard I that hear it gets I... better, Right. but as a, the first book in the mm -hmm. series right out of the gates, I was just like... Hmm. I feel like I just watched a movie. <laughs> huh. But uh, I should give her, her other books another try because she's Louise Penny's super yeah. popular as a Canadian totally, author. Totally, yeah. And there's tons of books by her on the shelves. So yeah, I feel like she's one of those things that I always see like on the bestsellers list. And yeah, chapters, yeah. But I've never been like, oh yeah, she exists. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I will try and move on, but like as a the first book and branching out to someone new is a little bit of a flop. Mm. But on the other note, I read my first James Patterson book recently, and oh my god, it was incredible. So now <laughs> I'm just good. like, more please. <laughs> Wasn't all a dad. Yeah. <laughs> What's your next one, Zoe? My next one, I, I just finished a couple weeks ago, and that was The Griffins of Castle Carry by Heather Shoemaker. Uh, this one's not out until next year, um, and it was set up as like a, a fun middle grade mystery ghost story sort of mm -hmm. for fans of like the Penderwicks which oh, cool. is a super series super popular series so it's about uh three siblings who uh, from America who go to spend the summer in the UK with their aunt um uh while well, their parents are off on a study somewhere I think um and she lives in this like heritage um cottage that's near near the Castle Carry mm -hmm. um and uh we quickly learn that there are, there are ghosts that um, that only at, or at least at first the the youngest one who's about five can see, um, and she like makes friends with the little girl, but she doesn't realize that she's a ghost. And then the the ghost sort of she she wants this little girl. She wants her life, whether it means that she gets to take over it or <laughs> or the little girl sort of comes mm, to her side. <laughs> I like wish it had been scarier. <laughs> um, yeah, it it's it started out strong, and then it I don't know if it was you know rushing to meet a deadline. I don't know. I don't right. know what happened to this story. Something fell apart. It's but it something fell apart. Um, and uh, 
I think maybe there were too many many elements that right. were trying to fight for uh, dominance, um, but uh, it just never came together for me, and uh, I really wanted it to. I was like prepared to choose this right. book um, for the for the box, and then by the end, I was like, well, mm. never mind. <laughs> so, yeah, mm, bummer. Bummer. So next up I have one that I think is pretty interesting because last year I included a book by this author on my top 10 favorite books of the mm -hmm. year. Five out of five stars. Loved it. This is my other one. I only had two one star reads this year and this is my other one. Okay. Pride and Prejudice is the first. <laughs> um, this, um, but that is Dreamcatcher by Stephen King. Oh. Hmm. That's not one I know of. Stephen King is very hit and miss for me. Um, I pick up his books when I find them at like the thrift store. I'll be like, I'll just make that one. Um, so that's what this is. Um, I listen to the audiobook. It's just, it's so gross. It's my problem <laughs> with it. Yeah. Basically, these four men go hunting, and they do this every year. And they go to this cabin, and then a stranger st stumbles upon their cabin, and he starts like bleeding, and like they don't know what's happening, and. Basically, people start shitting aliens, <laughs> if you'll excuse my language. <laughs> they get like infected with this like alien virus and it comes out, it rips out through their anus. So... <laughs> it's like, it's just so gross. Yeah. And like... And he I can't even... really digs into gross he scenes. He really does. <laughs> Yeah, like, I really don't even remember the plot because all I can think about, like, when I picked it up, being like, what are my least favorite books of the year? I was like, what that, what's that one about? I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, shitting in. <laughs> 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 like, I just hate it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's such a peaceful <laughs> <comfort. laughs> And it's like, and people, like, love this book. But, and like, on the blurb for it, it says, not since the stand has King crafted such an astonishing, a story of such astonishing range. And I'm like, I liked the stand. <laughs> so, it wasn't for me. I don't do things about bodily fluid. Fair enough. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> I just don't care for it. <laughs> so we're moving on. <laughs> so, like... I said at the beginning, I had a really good reading year. There wasn't much that I didn't like. So this is actually one of my favorite reads of the year, but the experience of reading it was just such a disappointment. And that's Grace and Fury by um, Tracy Bangart mm -hmm. that we included in August. And you did love this book. And I, I loved it, but as I was reading it, I was just so into it and so obsessed. And I had like 30 pages left and I was like, I don't even know how this is going to end. And I went on Goodreads and it was the first in a series. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I have to wait for more. It's gonna end. It was just one of those, like, I, I can't, I just love these characters. And then suddenly it's like, you're not getting I all of Karina it. I think Karina has the Queen of Ruins right there. Ooh. So if you wow. want to read the sequel, we have, <laughs> we have it. <laughs> Yoink. I'll be taking that home. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. We're going to solve your problem. But yeah, it, that was the only disappointment about it was I just got so into it and so like, oh, and then cliffhanger. I was like, what? What? Yeah, when so, you don't know already that that's coming, yeah. that's. That's like I think handle. when we were talking earlier, you said since we've been in the community so much more, you tend to know when something is in the first in a series. But I was clearly not paying attention, <laughs> and I was just so like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but now you have but, Queen of Ruin. Yeah, so it's in your hands. Lucky. You. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's yours, Holly? My last one of the year. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit unfair. And here's why. <laughs> here's why. Here's why. Um, it is Doll Bones by Holly Black. Um, this is one that I had started years ago when I was a bookseller. I would like kind of like right. read little bits at a time while I was pretending to shelf books. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know what? This is one that's sort of like referenced all the time. And if I'm going to be recommending it to other people, right. I should read this. So I listened to the audiobook. Uh, I'm admittedly not an audiobook person. And I really didn't like the, right. the narrator. Um, and I think it ruined the book for me. Right. Um, 
because the, the the plot itself, like when I sit back and like think about like what did I just listen to? I was like, oh, that was really cool. Yeah. But I did not like the experience like the of voice it at all. Will. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, it was a, a male who mm. was reading it, and two of the main characters are girls, and he made them both like really like nasally and annoying sounding, oh. and I'm like. You're making me not like this character, right. even though she's a great character. <laughs> like, what it was, um, I was super frustrated by it to the point that, like, I should perhaps like let it rest a bit in my mind and then just read it myself yeah, really. next it's year. It's a short book. It yeah. is a short book. And I think yeah. there's creepy illustrations in it too. Ooh. I think there might be. That wouldn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I will. I will give that one another shot. I think yeah. next year because I I love Holly Black and uh, <laughs> it's. Yeah, it's recommended to you know, to, everybody. All, to everybody all the time. So yeah. I'll sit with it and revisit. But I don't think that he should get to read books anymore. I do. I do find that some <laughs> narrators are hit and miss. Sometimes yeah. when I'm super into a book, yet I'm super busy, I'll switch between reading mm -hmm. it and listening to the audiobook. And sometimes I'll be listening to the audiobook and I'm be like, I like the voice in my head better. Totally. Yeah. You know, yeah. like. It's all, so it can be hit or miss, so it's yeah. probably a good book, but maybe it just wasn't I've read executed well. I really liked it. Yeah. It's very popular. But I know what you mean, because, like, I'm huge into audiobooks, yeah. and I don't, and I've listened to so many narrators now that I'm pretty forgiving, mm -hmm. but I do remember, like, I listened to Six of Crows, which is yeah. a huge book, and I've read it physically as well, but I reread it via audio, and the main, the narrator, how he did Kaz, who's, like, that one, like, made him sound so annoying. Right. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Kaz is, like, a great character. Right, yeah. And I was like, what are you doing to my baby? <laughs> it's yeah, so, so make or break. Yeah. Uh, so, but. yes, I will tell myself the story again next year. Yeah. See how it's I... spooky middle grade. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so my last one is going to be a surprise for many, I feel. And that is... Oh, <laughs> White Sand Volume 2 by Brandon Sanderson. I'm telling him you said what that. What happened? <laughs> what happened? What happened was, <laughs> I didn't like Volume 1 very much, but, and I think is what happened is, there's, um, he has a short story, like, compilation called Arcanum Unbound. Okay. And in that story, he wrote, like, a short story of this. So, like, he wrote this story, the, f the first volume, like, as, like, a short story. Okay not as a graphic novel, and I really liked that story. And I thought it was super interesting, I thought the world was really cool, but I found the comics feel so slow and boring. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. like the art style. It's like very liney and like very detailed, which isn't kind of my style. It's very dialogue heavy, which again, I, str I tend to struggle with in graphic novels. Like yeah. I feel like graphic novels, it should be the, f the pictures that move yeah. the plot forward more than the dialogue. That's fair. Yeah. And that's just my preference. Yeah. Um, so I really liked what he wrote as a short story, but I want more of that world in that format, yeah. not in this format. Because I struggle, I think it took me like two months to read. Really? Mm -hmm. And like, Brandon Sanderson is my all-time favorite yeah. author. <laughs> <laughs> so, will I get the next volume? Probably. Because <laughs> I'm yeah. me. <laughs> you need the whole joy. But, yeah, I just don't, I just don't like it. And it's like, it is part of his Cosmere universe, so it's part of his, like, bigger universe yeah. as well. I just can't. I just don't. And it's sad. I yeah. like, I gave it a 2.5 stars. Oh, no. Which isn't, like, a very, like, it's not, like, I read it and, like, enjoyed the story if I was, like, physically actually reading it. Right. But right. as soon as I put it down, I'd be like... <laughs> yeah. I, I like that with some books. You're like, while you're reading it, you really care about these characters and you love them, but as soon as you put it down, it gets no thought for me whatsoever. Yeah, right. I'd be like, I'd be like, I'm going to read five pages. And then, like, <laughs> well, that's, that's like a, definitely something to be said about how heavy the story must have been, because I find, like, a well-flowing graphic novel you could read in one to two hours and oh, just, yeah. you're done in yeah. the stories. But if it, you struggled that long, it's maybe like it's it could have been like two graphic Again, novels. it's like a really <laughs> cool premise because he, Brandon Sanderson makes amazing magic systems and it's right. about sand masters, so there's people that can c control threads of sand. Mm -hmm. So it's in, like this desert planet and that like, they can like fight with it. They can like rise them in the air and this is the way, it's really cool. Like Avatar. <laughs> but, yeah, in ways, but it's just, <laughs> Didn't do it for me. So sadly, it's one of my most disappointing reads of 2018. Boo. <laughs> Alright, so we did it, guys. We did it. Another year down. 
next week we're filming our best reads of the year. Yes. So that's a really exciting video. Videos. Okay. Yeah. Plural. We each get our own for that because uh, that one's gonna be hard. Yeah. In a totally different way. Now, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Down to the top ten. Yeah. So, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know some of your more disappointing mm -hmm. reads down in the comments. We're we love like if you loved some of these books. Good. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. We didn't hate them. Well, I hated them. <laughs> I, I hated a couple of them. <laughs> but most of them just weren't what I, what we wanted, yeah. right? Maybe yeah. we, we just overhyped them for yes, ourselves exactly. and then kind of let ourselves down as opposed to the book letting us down. But exactly. uh, well, maybe with the exception of Pride and Prejudice over there. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, again, if you liked, like these kind of unpopular opinion kind of things, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye.